The following program is sponsored by CBN. Today, Dr. David Perlmutter reveals how the modern world is warping your thoughts and what you can do to detox your mind. Then, 20 years of pain. Sometimes when I would just bend down, it would aggravate it. Gone in a moment. I said, God did something for me. I know God did something for me. Her miracle. By the grace of God, the pain is gone. I am free. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. After months of political drama, the Senate trial is finally over. President Trump is the winner, acquitted on both articles of impeachment yesterday. There was one surprise that gave solace to the Democrats. And the question still remains, are they really done? CBN Capitol Hill correspondent Abigail Robertson has the story. Republicans are not hiding their happiness after the historic acquittal of President Trump with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell predicting this will play well for vulnerable GOP senators up for election in 2020. Every one of our people in tough races, every one of them, is in better shape today than they were before the impeachment trial started. McConnell talked to reporters almost immediately after Chief Justice John Roberts banged the final gavel ending the trial. Donald John Trump be, and he is hereby, acquitted of the charges in said articles. Senator Mitt Romney, the sole Republican to break ranks, voted guilty on Article 1, abuse of power. I swore an oath before God to exercise impartial justice. President Trump hit back on Twitter, saying had failed presidential candidate Mitt Romney devoted the same energy and anger to defeating a faltering Barack Obama as he sanctimoniously does to me, he could have won the election. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer praised Romney, arguing his single vote on the one article gave credibility to the proceeding. We made the fight for truth and we made the fight for facts. And it created a bipartisan impeachment that can never be erased from history. Never. But Republican Senator Lindsey Graham warns this impeachment process sets a dangerous precedent for future presidents. This sham process is the low point in the Senate for me. If you think you've done the country a good service by legitimizing this impeachment process, what you have done is unleash the partisan forces of hell. Donald Trump Jr. tells CBN News he thinks voters see through impeachment. This impeachment started the day he beat Hillary Clinton and has gone on since then. It has manifested itself a few times. First it was Russia, then it was this, then it was that, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's just gone on forever. Although the trial is over, investigations will continue with talk already of the House majority planning to subpoena former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Well, the beat is going to go on, and if you think the acquittal in the Senate is somehow going to stop Congress from continuing this kind of thing, think again. And if President Trump wins another uh, election, in all likelihood, the Republicans aren't going to carry the Congress, and so we're going to see this again and again and again. Now, has, has impeachment been weaponized politically? Has it become part partisan? The answer is clearly yes. Uh, what does that mean for the long-term uh, state of our republic? Uh, we have to realize here's a biblical principle, and, and we're coming against that. A house divided against itself cannot stand. If we spend all our political energy trying to go through impeachments and hearings as opposed to actually governing and dealing with the very real issues that we're dealing with around the world, and whether that's terrorism or viral outbreaks or international trade or the state of our economy, uh, the state of our national debt, if we're not dealing with these issues, if we're distracted with yet another round of political drama, what's that going to mean? Uh, there's going to be an election, and your voice gets to be heard, uh, so make sure that you vote. In other news, the U.S. State Department is evacuating more Americans from China today, removing them from the center of the coronavirus.
John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John. Thanks, Gordon. Two more planes carrying hundreds of Americans are expected to arrive in the United States today, one in Texas and the other in Nebraska. They'll be quarantined for 14 days at military bases. The U.S. now has its 12th case, the latest reported in Wisconsin. And the total number of infections worldwide is now more than 28,000, including a newborn baby in Wuhan, China, diagnosed just 30 hours after being born. The death toll now exceeding 560, almost all of those cases in China. Well, the stock market is bouncing back after last week's big sell-off sparked by the coronavirus outbreak. Market watchers say increased efforts to contain the virus and work towards treatments are restoring investor confidence. The markets closed up for the third straight day Wednesday. The Dow Jones gained more than 480 points, while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq hit new closing highs. Investor optimism may be premature, though. The World Health Organization reports as of yet there are, quote, no known effective therapeutics against the virus. Well, today is the 68th annual National Prayer Breakfast right here in Washington, D.C. 3,500 people are expected to attend, among them elected officials, diplomats, and religious and political leaders. The president and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi both addressing the prayer breakfast. Tune in to CBN's Newswatch and our Faith Nation programs on the CBN News Channel, as well as CBNNews.com to see their remarks. Well, Palestinian leaders are proposing a U.N. Security Council denouncing President Trump's peace deal. Meanwhile, violence is erupting in Palestinian areas in opposition to that plan. As CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reports, Jerusalem is still one of the most contentious issues. A terrorist rammed his car into a group of soldiers in Jerusalem early Thursday, wounding 12. One of the latest attacks in an upsurge of violence. There's been an increase in tension both at the scene uh, in Jerusalem here and in general across Judea and Samaria. We've seen a rise in uh, attacks. Following the release of the plan, Abbas rejected Jerusalem as the undivided capital of Israel. Shortly after it was unveiled, saying a Palestinian state without Jerusalem, I immediately rejected the solution. I will not have it recorded in my history and the history of the country that I sold Jerusalem. U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman explained the Jerusalem part of the deal. Jerusalem is an undivided city within a security barrier, and under the Trump plan, that undivided city within the security barrier will be 100 percent under Israeli sovereignty with the Temple Mount retaining the status quo. The Temple Mount is under Israeli security control and Jordanian religious authority. Beyond the security barrier, you still have municipal Jerusalem. And in that area, there is uh, territory earmarked for a Palestinian capital. Abu Dis is part of that area. Decades ago, this was to be the Jerusalem seat of government for the Palestinian Authority. But now Abu Dis Mayor Ahmed Abu Halal told CBN News that's a non-starter. We refuse that thing. For me, I'm as the mayor of Abu Dis, I refuse to be the capital of Palestine. I'm a part of Jerusalem. In 1996, the Palestinian Authority broke ground to build a parliament building in Abu Dis, but the building was never completed. They built the parliament because use Abu Dis as the part of Jerusalem. They have no walls here. Now they put in the walls. Israel built a security barrier in Jerusalem more than 15 years ago at the height of the second Palestinian Intifada to prevent terrorists from entering the city. From a rooftop in Abu Dis overlooking the security barrier and Jerusalem beyond, it's easy to see how the two sides were once one. We used to work here, uh, we go into Jerusalem. Before the wall, uh, every night we'd be in, in Jerusalem watching the cinema. al Azariah is a mostly Muslim town in Palestinian Authority area, just over a mile from Jerusalem. It's known in the Bible as Bethany, the place where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. al Azariah Mayor Islam Faroum said the Trump plan misses the point about Jerusalem. The importance of this area, Lazaria, Abu Dis, and other villages here, have its importance because we are surrounding Jerusalem. Without our Jerusalem, we are nothing here. I'm telling you, I hope so. The beast is coming back. That's what we need. Everybody needs the beast. The beast is good for everybody. But with the Palestinian rejection of the plan, it's not likely a peace deal will be signed anytime soon. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Abu Dis. Gordon, President Trump described his plan as the deal of the century. Meanwhile, Palestinians are calling it racist. 
Well, there's no deal here. Um, the good thing about this plan is I think it's finally unmasked the charade that has been going on for 70 years. And one of the negotiators had the honesty to actually admit it. Uh, we engage in peace talks not to end up at a deal, but to give people hope. And so the, the idea is let's continue talks forever because we all know we're never going to come to kind, some kind of deal. So let's just talk like we're going to come to a deal and, and give people hope that we can come to a deal. And all we're doing is kicking the can down the road. Here's the other part of it. You and I are paying every time that we kick the can down the road. And whether it's direct support to the Palestinian Authority or indirect support through the UN, through an agency called UNRWA, we're actually paying Palestinians to be refugees. They get a monthly stipend for their refugee status. So there's no incentive, zero incentive on their part to actually form a state uh, because all of that would then go away. Uh, and they would have to go out and actually build a nation and build an economy and, and do these things. Um, you know, so it's, we're paying for this. We're paying for that can to get kicked down the road. Now, here's the good thing. The Trump administration is finally saying enough to UNRWA. Uh, we're not going to pay for terrorism because that's part of this payment. The Palestinian Authority rewards terrorists by giving them a big monthly stipend. If they're killed in the action, that monthly payment goes to their families. If they're in prison, that monthly payment goes to their families. So there's an economic incentive to go out and kill Israelis, to go out and foster unrest and terrorism and all these other things. Uh, I think the best thing we can do right now is get rid of that. Uh, there's no reason for American taxpayers to support that kind of nonsense. Uh, let's expose it for what it is. Everyone says peace, let's negotiate for peace, but there's obviously no peace. And any Palestinian leader that will actually come to Israel, sit down, make a deal, form a Palestinian state, say we're at peace now with Israel, no more attacks, none of that anymore, that Palestinian leader will be assassinated. Uh, that's tough to say, it's tough to hear, but that's the reality. When you look at what happened to Anwar Sadat, he, as the president of Egypt, came to Israel, spoke at the Knesset, recognized Israel's right to exist, came to a peace deal, received back the Sinai, uh, received back territory, but said, I want a lasting peace with Israel. He was publicly executed by the Muslim Brotherhood at a grandstand reviewing Egyptian troops. Those very troops he were, uh, was reviewing, they came and killed him. Now, that's the reality, and we need more and more. Let's face that reality, and let's call it for what it is. It is evil. Terry? Well, up next, could the toxic world of technology be hijacking your brain? If so, what can you do to detox? Neurologist Dr. David Perlmutter offers the ultimate brainwash for health and happiness, and that's just ahead. Also ahead, surgeons cut into her sternum with a saw and 20 years of pain followed. How did this woman finally get relief in an instant? Stay tuned to find out. We'll be back. Instant gratification. Well, that's the kind of world we live in. We can shop, get the news, and even order dinner with our fingertips. At the same time, levels of depression and chronic disease are now skyrocketing. Could there be a connection? Well, here, here's health reporter Lori Johnson. We all want to live long and happy lives. That pursuit results in trying to eat right, exercise, and improve relationships. Unfortunately, those best laid plans often fail. Before you give up the fight, however, consider this. Research suggests the deck is stacked against us. 
Best-selling author and neurologist David Perlmutter says studies show modern culture rewires our brain, causing us to make poor decisions that make us unhappy. The good news? According to the doctor, we can turn things around. In his new book, Brainwash, Perlmutter outlines a plan to detox the mind so you can live the life God has planned for you. Well, Dr. Perlmutter joins us now. He's got a best-selling book, New York Times best-selling book, Brainwash, and let's get right into it. You say our brains are being rewired and it's these kinds of devices that are doing the damage. How, how is this working to re, we rewire our brain? Well, a lot of ways. We know that people who spend a lot of time on their digital devices, and let's face it, Americans spend more than six hours a day in front of one screen or another. And not only is that damaging to the brain and keeping us away from really connecting to those parts of our brains that allow us to be more empathetic, more forward thinking, more understanding, but it's been said, you know, when you're doing one thing, you're not doing something else. You're not exercising, you're not participating in relationships with people, you're not thinking about your meals and eating appropriately. So our research reveals that even the inflammation brought on by the standard American diet severs our connection to this part of the brain that allows us to be more understanding, more able to embrace the ideas of other people. We call that cognitive empathy. Um, what is it about these devices that makes them addictive? Well, I think they play into fear. They play into a notion that we aren't good enough and quickly supply to us uh, responses and actions that can make us feel like we're doing something to bring us joy. But it's only evanescent, it's transient, and it's not the long-term satisfaction and joy that we are looking for. We know that our attention, our eyeballs are, are valuable to others when we are online. Hence the constant clickbait, the advertisements that appear that somehow miraculously are areas that we might be interested in and really takes us off of the task that we want to accomplish when we're online. So, you know, 40% of our waking hours and spent uh, in front of one screen or another, it is uh, not only distracting, but it's keeping us in this mindset of, as you saw in the setup, instant gratification. Mm -hmm. And instant gratification takes us away from long-term planning, better decision-making, where we think about the long-term consequences of our actions right now. Are, do you think most people who use these devices are even aware that they're being rewired? What, what no, would be sir. a sign for them to say, eh, you might want to take a closer look at this? What, what, what behavior should we By and large, people are having their attention captivated. And we created something called the test of time, T. How much time are you going to dedicate to what you want to explore online? I, is it intentional? What is your goal? M, is it mindful? Do you remain on top of what's going on? And finally, E, is it enriching? We all know that you, know, you can be researching something online to learn something, and the next thing you know, uh, some pop-up ad comes and we're taken away. And that's damaging to your brain. Again, that is locking you into the area of the brain that is much more impulsive, much more narcissistic, and keeping you away from, again, this ability that we have of looking at another person's opinion and being with that opinion. Mm. We have this thing called social media where we go on sites that only cater to our opinion, our frame of reference, our point of view. And it's clear that we need to be able to participate in being with other people's points of view if we're gonna move forward. All right, well, now that we've diagnosed the, diagnosed the, the problem, what, what's the cure? What, what do you recommend in the book that people should do to say, okay, let's take some conscious decisions here. How, how do I get untangled from sure. the Sure. Well, uh, in addition to, as I mentioned, the test of time, we know that we can reestablish our connection to that part of the brain that allows us to be more thoughtful, more appreciative of other people, for example. And uh, it turns out that prayer and meditation are ways of reestablishing the functionality of that part of the brain. We call it the prefrontal cortex that allows that to happen. So we can restructure, rewire our brains to allow us to be the people we could be. Uh, How much time do you recommend someone start? 12 minutes. The research, you know, hard scientific research shows 12 minutes 
a day. The other big player that we really should talk about is so pervasive in America is lack of restorative sleep. That very next morning when you've not had a good night of restorative sleep, you are locked into that part of the brain called the amygdala uh, that is much more impulsive, much more self-centered, and distances me from being able to appreciate your point of view, for example. Uh, you know, we live in a time, as uh, is very clear, where there's great divisiveness. People cannot share the opinions of others or at least be with them and experience what it's like to view the world through another person's perspective. It really is, uh, you know, in recognizing how that is threatened by this process of inflammation. Inflammation brought on by our diets, by our lifestyle, our lack of exercise severs our connection to that part of the brain so we can reestablish. Okay. What can I do from a dietary standpoint to get rid of that kind? Well, well how, again, it's all about focus? inflammation. Inflammation, the same inflammation that's the cornerstone of things like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and even Alzheimer's is the inflammation that is keeping us from accessing that part of the brain. This is a diet that's lower in sugar. This is a diet that's lower in refined carbohydrates and highly processed, we call them ultra processed foods. We all know what makes for a good diet. The problem is our decision making is, is really leveraged by that part of the brain as well. Making good decisions requires that we bring back online this prefrontal cortex and we do so by, uh, by getting a better night's sleep, by eating this lower inflammatory diet. Well, how important is gut bacteria to this? Gut bacteria critical. I've been on the program before talking about that. And um, what a sobering notion it is that these trillions of bacteria living within us are, as I mentioned, regulating inflammation, playing the key role in, in inflammation in our bodies. And as such, the bacteria within us, it's a stretch, but they play a role in whether we connect to the part of the brain that uh, enhances our impulsivity and self-centeredness versus allowing us to connect to that part of the brain that allows us to think about others, think about our futures and make better decisions. Okay. Well, if you're suffering with anxiety and stress and you're overstimulated and you're having trouble sleeping, I recommend this new book. It's called Brainwash. It's available wherever books are sold. You've got the remedy right there. All you have to do is look at your diet your exercise, the amount of time you pray, meditate on scriptures, all of these things will help you reconnect with that area of the brain that will bring you peace. And that's a good thing. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for the book. Terry, over to you. Well, still ahead, celebrate St. Patty's Day like never before. We'll tell you how and give you a sneak peek at the new film, I Am Patrick. But first, open heart surgery saved this woman's life, but it left her in pain for 20 years. What two words finally set her free? The answer after this. Open heart surgery saved Nancy Bradley's life but it brought her a world of pain. For 20 years she suffered, but she never lost hope that one day she'd be healed. How did it finally happen when she least expected it? Take a look. The doctor said that I would need open heart surgery and that it would be five bypasses. It was 1998 when Nancy Bradley learned that all five major arteries entering her heart were blocked. The news left her and her husband, Omar, reeling. At 7 o'clock, I had the stress test, and by 11 o'clock, I was in surgery. I was shocked that it, it was that serious because she didn't had never slowed down any. She just complained of being short of breath a little bit. The surgery was successful, but recovery was a different story. To access her heart, surgeons had to cut into her sternum using a saw. I was in the hospital for nine days. I came home on the ninth day, and I was really sore. They had me wired together. As weeks, months, and years passed, the pain persisted. It should have gone away, but some people 
never recover from that because that's a sensitive part of the body. I had a huge sensitivity in the sternal area. I couldn't pick up anything, and if I squeezed something, it centered right into the sternal area and caused it to hurt, just ache. Sometimes when I would just move or bend down, it would, it would aggravate it. The pain continued for 20 years. With flare-ups so agonizing, Nancy often turned to the Lord asking for relief. I'd say, God, I give it to you. I give it to you. I need your touch. I need your help. And you know, Lord, I'm trusting for this to leave in the name of Jesus. Through the years, Nancy and Omar have found encouragement watching The 700 Club. When I listen to The 700 Club, one of the greatest things that they do is when they have a word of knowledge, when they pray for someone, or when they bless somebody in some way. That, that to me is so encouraging, so helpful. Then in July 2019, while watching The 700 Club, Nancy heard a word that was not only encouraging, but life-changing. Gordon had a word of knowledge. There's someone that had had open heart surgery and they were having problem in the sternal area. There's someone you're, you've had recurring pain in your sternum from open heart surgery and it just never seems to go away and you're not even asking for relief. But God sees your pain right now and he's saying be healed and that entire bone be restored now. Cause no more pain, no more discomfort in Jesus' name be healed and be set free. I kind of jumped out of my chair and I said, that's me. I know it's me. God did something for me. I know God did something for me. And I said, is it, is it bothering you now? And she said, no, it's not hard. I don't hardly feel it. By the grace of God, the pain is gone. I do not have the pain. And I am so grateful for what he did because I can lift now and I am free. Freedom from decades of pain has given Nancy a newfound sense of living. She exercises and walks more, and she continues to live a life that testifies of God's healing power and love. I try to live for Him every day and ask for His blessing, that I would be a blessing to others because He's such a blessing to me, and I'm so grateful. I don't know about you, but I'm just here rejoicing with Nancy that that 20 year pain is gone, done. God did something for her because he is the Lord, our healer. His faithfulness knows no end. He knows your name. And so today we want to pray with you and for you. And I know that many of you have needs you've been lifting up. Be encouraged by the fact that she was faithful for a long time. Why was there that gap? I don't know. I don't question God in those things, but I know he's real. I know he loves you and I know he understands your need. Gordon didn't know Nancy, still don't know Nancy. I, guess. <laughs> I know her a lot better <laughs> now. <laughs> That's great. Well, this is Ruby. Ruby lives in Calexico, California. She was in a serious car accident just a year ago. It left her with a broken right shoulder blade. Her ribs were broken. One day she decided to watch a recording she had of the 700 Club from wow. five years ago. On this show, she heard you, Gordon, pray. God is healing a long time injury. God's healing right now. You even mentioned it was a wow. scapula. Ruby knew God could heal anyone and by faith received her heal healing. She felt a touch on her ribs and she was healed. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Spirit of God knows no time or distance. Here's Valerie from Wheatley, Ontario. She was in an accident. She suffered lingering pain in her right shoulder for an entire year. Watching the 700 Club, Terry uh, prayed a word of knowledge for her exact condition, even mentioning it was due to an accident. Terry went on to say someone has curvature of the spine and pain and God is healing. Well, by faith, Valerie received both words. She received it all, was instantly healed. The pain in her shoulder and her back yeah. has not returned. God does miracles and Jesus is passing by. Mm -hmm. Realize that in him we live and move and have our being. Because he spoke, the worlds came into being. You came into being. He breathed life into you. And just what he did when he was walking through Israel 2,000 years ago, he is still doing today because he is the same 
yesterday, today, and forever. You can count on him. So when you do what they did in the Bible days, you get the same result. So as Jesus was passing by a blind man, blind Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus just started crying out, son of David, have mercy on me. He kept crying out. He would not be silent. He would not be still. People told him to be still. He said, uh-uh, I'm getting my miracle. Now for Nancy, she wasn't even looking for a miracle. She wasn't even praying. But Jesus spoke to her and called her out, called out her condition, and he'll do that for you. What he did for Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was up in a tree looking, for, looking, wanted, but Jesus went to him, called out for him. So either way, and realize it's either way, you can cry out like blind Bartimaeus, or Jesus can call for you. And the wonderful thing, both work. So let's do that. Let's cry out. Let's, let's ask, but let's also receive. And the purpose of the word of knowledge is to give you faith to believe that Jesus will do it for you. So let's have that faith and let's believe. Faith is an action. Jesus looks for faith. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro over the whole world looking for it. So right now, let's show off our faith that we believe we pray, we ask, he responds. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask for the people right now, and in an act of faith, we lay hands with them on that area of the body that needs healing, and we claim your wonderful word, that when two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. These are your words. And when you promise, you deliver. So, Lord God Almighty, we believe in your word. We believe in you. We believe in your sacrifice. We believe that by your stripes we are healed and restored and made whole. And in Jesus' name, we say to our bodies, be healed. You are healed now, and the righteousness of Christ and the righteousness of the anointing is filling me to overflowing, driving out all pain, all infirmity now in Jesus' name. I receive all the promises of God, for they are all yes and amen in Christ Jesus. When I receive Jesus, I receive everything. Now, Lord, stretch forth your hand. Do miracles and wonders today. There's someone you're praying for your sternum. You're encouraged by the story of Nancy and your problem is based on your genetics, that somehow or other your sternum is uh, curving inward into your body. God is able to move that. He's able to even change how your bones grow. So in Jesus' name, be healed and be set free. There are others who are saying, my problem is from surgery too. Can you pr pray for me? And yes, let's pray for you to be all that pain be gone now in Jesus name. Breathe freely, breathe openly and realize all of it has left you in the name of Jesus. Terry? There's someone else you have. Um, it's your, the arches of your feet. Both your feet are affected by whatever this is, but your right foot especially has been very painful this last year. And it, it makes wearing your normal shoes uncomfortable, just your whole gait has been changed by it. God's healing that for you right now, not just in your right foot, but in both of your feet. Your arches are made whole in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone you've been diagnosed with chronic inflammation, and it just seems like your body is consistently f and constantly fighting some kind of infection or inflammation. Mm -hmm. You've tried the diet, you've tried the exercise, you've tried everything you know how to do. Mm -hmm. And right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, be healed. Let your body no longer war against itself. All inflammation be gone now. All stress, all anxiety, all sleeplessness be gone now. Be healed, be restored, be set free. There's someone else you have. I don't know if you're on dialysis or you've just been um, told you need it, but God's healing your kidneys for you. Just even though there's, there is some kind of a genetic condition involved in that, it's just 
all that's not in order is being set in order and you will be free from that in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done for us, your sacrifice for us, your peace that you give to us, your righteousness that you give to us, your healing that you give to us. We thank you for all of it. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share your story with people around the world. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. If you need prayer, we're here for you. We believe in prevailing prayer, the prayer that gets an answer, the prayer that doesn't give up, the prayer of blind Bartimaeus. You can, you can pray that same prayer and pray that same way with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is call, 1-800-700-7000. Tara? Well, still ahead, a baby's life is in constant danger, but her mother has no way to afford the life-saving brain surgery her daughter needs. See how this mom turns to prayer and then see the miracle that follows. That's coming up. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. Evangelist Franklin Graham is going to court to fight for his religious rights in the United Kingdom. Graham's preaching engagements there have been canceled at various locations because of his biblical views on sexuality and marriage after pressure from LGBT activists. A Graham spokesperson told CBN News that since the original venues have broken their legal contracts, the association will pursue appropriate actions based on grounds of religious discrimination and free speech. Well, Tim Tebow recently hosted more than 100,000 people at a special event. Tebow says he wants to make sure everyone is valued for their God-given worth. He told Fox News, I believe a catalyst for doing that is Night to Shine, our worldwide prom for people with special needs, saying because his organization goes out of its way to make the biggest, most special night of the year for people with special needs because they're worth it and they're special. Global Night to Shine events are set for Friday. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Heaven Light is a little girl with a glow about her that matches her name. Her mother is devoted to her. But not long ago, Heaven Light was in constant danger every single day. When Heaven Light was two months old, her mother found a bump on her head. As time went by, it grew bigger. When she plays, I make sure she does not hurt herself or bump her head. She often touches her head and says, Mommy, get this off. I realized how dangerous it was and went all over to find out. The plates in her skull didn't fuse the way they should have, so she's had fluid from her brain accumulate here just under the skin. Left untreated, over time, her brain would eventually start to grow through that hole and she'd probably develop mental disabilities. When I learned Heaven Light needed surgery, I lost all hope because I couldn't afford it. I worried for her future because daily activities are dangerous for her. I prayed God would make a way for us because there was nothing I could do. Heaven Light's mother kept searching for help and learned about Arusha Lutheran Medical Center, a hospital supported by Operation Blessing. We soon arranged and paid for Heaven Light surgery. She recovered completely. I am so relieved and at peace now. Afterward, she felt her head and said, it is gone now, and smiled. She will be able to go to school safely. She can interact and play like other children. Thank you to everyone who helped make this possible. You have changed our lives. The everyone she's talking about is you, 700 Club members. We want to say thank you. Gordon was just saying, 
Isn't it a privilege that we get to do this, that we get to touch and change lives like this? And it happens when we all link arms together. So we're inviting those of you who haven't yet joined the 700 Club to join with the rest of us because we really are out to change the world and it's happening. And we can go even further and do even more when more of you call and say, I wanna be a part of that. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month to join the 700 Club. Will you go to our phone, your phone and call now? Our number's toll free, couldn't be easier. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I wanna join the 700 Club. We have several levels that you can join at, but a basic membership, 65 cents a day, $20 a month. We can all do that. When you call, by the way, one of the things we're gonna do as a thank you for caring about others is to send you Pat's latest book. It's called 10 Laws for Success keys to win in work, family, and finance. Pat has culled out of the word of God, the principles of God that he's explained for all of us so we can live full of him, full of power, full of all kinds of opportunity like you just saw. This is our gift to you when you join the 700 Club. We'll get it out to you right away. So please call now. Gordon? Up next, he was kidnapped by pirates and enslaved. And that's just the beginning of his epic adventure. The true story of St. Patrick is coming to the big screen, and we'll tell you all about it right after this. In the 1500 years since he brought Christianity to Ireland, Legends about St. Patrick have flourished, mixing truth, myth, and allegory. But the real story of his life is epic in scope and far more fascinating than any fairy tale. It's also the subject of an upcoming movie called I Am Patrick. Let's take a look. It was not my grace, but God, who conquered in me and who resisted them all that I might come to the Irish nations to preach the gospel. The preconception that we've got about St. Patrick is completely wrong. Ireland was a place of barbarians at the end of the world. Get going, boy. It is slavery for life. Patrick, you are to travel to your homeland. Patrick. Patrick. You're alive. You're alive. To hear the call to go back to Ireland terrified him. It was asking a lot of this man to do this. This does not have to be, Patrick. It is the will of God. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Who among you heeds the call? Well, why would this man put himself in danger among enemies who do not know God? People thought that this mission was crazy, that his efforts to Christianize Ireland were doomed to failure. Tell us the secret you know about Patrick. Things in the past can come back to haunt us. Take him. It's time to go. I'm not finished. On St. Patrick's Day, you can actually see his story in his own words. We've, we've taken the tack, let's limit ourselves to what St. Patrick wrote about himself. And there's two writings, one is his confession and the other is his letter to Caratica. So we've based the, the film entirely on what he wrote about himself. We're not getting into the myths, the legends. We're showing you St. Patrick in his own words. Uh, and it, it's a wonderful story. I hope it inspires people to become missionaries. I hope it inspires you 
to be a better Christian. Um, it, it's, it's something for the entire family to go. I, I hope churches go because it will inspire a whole new generation. Here's a man who changed a nation. And boy, do we have nations that need changing today. And how do we inspire ourselves to say, we can do this. Patrick overcame incredible odds. Everything was against him. He was preaching to pagans. His life was in danger literally on a daily basis. But he persevered and he changed a nation. So if you want to see his story, all you have to do is go to IamPatrick.com. We're in now over a thousand theaters throughout America. All you have to do is type in your zip code. You can find a theater near you. There's just going to be available two days. So it's March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, and the next day, March 18th. Uh, we've only got two showings of it. So go to IamPatrick.com. Get your tickets now. Uh, our last film sold out. I don't want you disappointed. So. Uh, get your tickets now, and you can have the wonderful story of how Ireland became a Christian nation. We'll be back to answer your email questions right after this. send in questions you'd like to hear answered on the show. So we want to do that right now as we look at your email. Gordon, this first one comes from Roger, who says, how do we reconcile the gift of the word of knowledge with the biblical admonition against being a medium? Uh, Roger, the two have nothing to do with each other at all. Uh, the Bible condemns those spirits that peep and mutter. And mediums, what they're claiming is they're in contact with the dead. They're not in contact with the dead at all. They're in contact with what the Bible calls familiar spirits. And these are demonic entities that want to bring confusion to you, that want to lie to you. They want to peep and mutter to you. Uh, and it's all designed to be a counterfeit for what God wants to bring you, which is his Holy Spirit, a pure spirit that edifies, that builds you up, that exhorts you. And here's what the great thing that the word of knowledge does. It brings healing to people. Uh, that is not demonic at all. Jesus had this whole comparison between what is of God and what is not. And uh, that's where we get the house divided against itself, where people were accusing Jesus of casting out demons uh, by the spirit of Beelzebub. And, uh, don't confuse the two. When you see salvations, when you see healings, when you see people edified, exhorted, built up, encouraged in their faith, that is a pure word from the Holy Spirit. Hold on to that. Bible also says, let's test the spirits. Let the prophets prophesy and the others judge. So test it. Does it, does it agree with scripture? Uh, do you see the same evidence in the, in the Bible? Uh, a lot of different tests to apply to it, but the biggest one is, does it exhort? Does it build up? Does it edify? Uh, does it encourage? Does it bring the love of God? If those things are happening, then it's wonderful. Well, I'm going to jump down to number three for time's sake. All right. okay. Is obedience necessary for salvation? Julie asks, how obedient do we have to be to get to heaven? All right. Well, here's a um, bring you up short uh, scripture from Matthew chapter five, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now that seems to be impossible, but here's some encouragement from the book of Jude to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before his presence of glory with exceeding joy to God, our savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty dominion and power. He makes us perfect. He makes us more righteous than the Pharisees. By all means, obey, 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 but confess your sins before him. Here's a word from Psalm 42. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in his night, his song shall be with me. 